Hello there, it's Ina here, and welcome to my art room. Yes, I'm back, yay! I hope you had a wonderful beginning of the new year. I had a very busy month because we were renovating, and so I did do a lot of painting, but mostly painting walls and doors and windowsills and so on. It did leave me some time in the evening and also so in between when I was able to sneak off into my art room to work on some projects. And the results of some of them I posted on my Facebook page and you will be able to see a couple more here in my upcoming videos. One of them is this journal I worked on through the last few weeks. Now when I first start making journals I took a little journey from making smash books to junk journals to art journals. Now in my art journals I usually like to work loose leaf, which means I basically decorate a cover, the binding is very simple and that's it. But I was inspired by many of my friends who make wonderful journals on YouTube and I was also browsing a lot of new channels for new ideas because I wanted to alter a book. I found one channel in particular which really inspired some of the ideas in this book and it's by an artist called Laurie Marie and I will of course put the link to her channel below. Please give her a visit and say hi. <laughs> She is a mixed media artist, she is very creative, has a lot of really fun idea and she has a series on an interactive art journal. And so I took some of her ideas and the inspiration for the whole project and I altered this book to become an interactive art journal. Now in part one of this little series I will show you how I prepared the book so I could work in it. And then part two will be a very uh, detailed flip through so you can see the final result. So the next uh, part of this video is a footage I did of course in the very beginning of this book. I will do some voiceover and hopefully it will all be very simple to understand and will give you a good start should you want to make a book like this as well. So here we go. I chose a book, an old book from the 50s about African violets. It has a rather small spine, so not too many pages to work on. It has sewn in signature and that nice old paper feel. To start with, I removed a piece from the cover using my X-Acto knife and this piece will get back in there later on. Now the first page in a book is often blank. So I added one of the pages I removed from the book. I removed maybe about 20 pages, as you see here, not too many, just enough to give me a little wiggle room. The next step I took, I always glued two pages together all throughout the book. And all I did add some glue to the edges. I didn't really glued the middle as I feel the pages are secure enough and stay more flat and easier to work in if they don't get glue everywhere. Then I created a very thick area here in the very front where I glued about 20 pages together. Now when you do that just add glue to the edges like you see me do here, plenty of it and then clamp it and let it dry really well. You might have to repeat the step a couple of times but it's a lot easier than gluing one page at a time. Then I cut out another area similarly as I did in the front and I added a little bit of glue to the edges just to make the paper glue together right there. And you can clamp that as well. Next I cut the page in half. The bottom will be the closure for my little compartment. Now I will show you all the details on this old little notebook I had laying around because I finished the preparation of this book before I thought I better show you how to do it. So here I'm marking the hole on the next page. Then I draw out the flap, of course a little bigger than the hole I cut. And then again with my X-Acto knife, I just cut it out. Now of course you don't want to cut the top because that's going to be the hinge. And then when it's all cut, Instead of folding it on the same page, you turn the page and fold it up on the next page. And then after you glue that together, you have a closure. 
Now the next page is just normal for art journaling and then here come some pockets. Two on each side, you could easily create three or whichever many you want. Again, you just take two opposing pages and fold the corner backwards. And then you take two more, one on each side and fold the corners in a smaller way to the back again. And then you have two pockets very simply. And of course you have to glue down the sides. You can also glue down the flap, although that stays pretty easily on its own. And so just glue it down and kind of see where you need to put the glue. And there you have two pockets. Next, a normal page. <laughs> and then I cut out a diamond shape. Now here I glued two double pages together. So it's actually four pages thick, just to make it a little more sturdy. Then here I just cut a piece out of the page to bring a little extra interest. Uh, let's see. And here I added a page I ripped out of the book. Again, I doubled them up and I also used a piece to glue it down here in the middle to create extra space. Next, I cut down a couple of pages. Again, just for a little bit of extra interest. All I did, I took two opposing pages cut a piece of the bottom, the top and on the sides, which of course make them very smaller and give you a bit of an insert to work with. So there's that. Next, a normal page. <laughs> then I had a page and I cut it right in the middle very simply. And then I took two opposing pages, double pages. I cut a hole through both of them and this will serve me to sandwich something in the middle. Not sure yet what at that point, but you can put all kinds of different materials there to create type of a window. Here I added again a page, this time to the top to make a real long page. And the last step is a little pocket at the very end. I cut the page there on the top, just a skinny piece, fold over the rest and glue down the bottom edges. It makes for a very thin pocket but it's big enough to hold a tag as you see here. So those were the preparations and I did them all ahead of time because I wanted the boring bits done so that now I could just work in it. As you can see, there is plenty of room in these pockets for tags. So the next thing I did, I decorated everything as you can see and it got pretty yummy and pretty fat, but it put a lot of stress on the spine. And to make it a little bit easier on the book and to make it live a little longer, I went ahead and just cut the spine and it really helps the pages to actually straighten out a little bit again. Now, I don't mind really the crookedness of it when you first work in it, but making it straighter really helps the book to close better and live longer. So now it's a couple hours later and somehow things just move around just by themselves and it straightened up the pages quite a bit. To reconnect the spine cover, I use a piece of painter's tape. I put it down sticky side up, so nothing glues to the spine, it just connects the cover. And as you can see, it moved apart and gave the book a little room to breathe and not make it so tight. I add another piece on the top, and in my case, this is sufficient as I will add a very sturdy fabric cover to the book and it will hold it all in place. Then I prepared the cover material by using simple cotton, ripping it into the proper size, a little bigger than the book and covering it with gesso on both sides. This makes a very sturdy and fun to work on material. I will of course cut the window here. So those were the steps I took to prepare the book and the pages before I worked in it. Also how I took the pressure off a stressed spine and you got a glimpse at what this cover looked like before I colored it. So in my next video I will give you a flip through so you can see how my pages look now and what I did to all the interactive parts. I think it is full of fun ideas and details and I really hope you come and join me for it. I will be uploading in just a couple of days. So see you all then. Bye bye for now.